Okay, so this is the last talk of the uh, community theatre for this DockerCon. And it's a great pleasure to introduce Pierre Gavalet and uh, Dave Scott. They are from Docker. Hey. And uh, they're on the desktop team. And they're going to talk about improved file sharing performance in Docker desktop. Hi. Well, uh, thank you everyone. So we are going to talk about uh, improving performances in Docker Desktop. Uh, they we are already. So we are going to start by uh, explaining the main differences uh, when we are sharing uh, data between the host and the container, uh, between uh, Linux and uh, what we are actually doing in Docker Desktop for Mac or for Windows. Then we'll share uh, some of the be best practices about sharing volume uh, for performances, and then we'll uh, show some of the features that are currently in development in the desktop team. So when uh, we are actually sharing data from the host uh, to from the host to a container on Linux by uh, using a command like this. Uh, well, it's pretty easy because on Linux the container is actually running on the host, so we have only one kernel and one virtual file system. So it's basically just a bind mount between the host and the container. And it's, it simply works, so it's pretty easy. But we'll see that uh, because of what we are doing on uh, desktop, it's uh, much harder on Mac and on Windows. Yeah. Yeah, I think the slide is slightly out of order, order. Yes. but uh, yeah. Uh, so Linux is like this, uh, with one kernel, uh, with the container having uh, access directly to the uh, host. So a bind mount will work. Whereas if we go to the Mac case, we now have two separate kernels: the macOS kernel running your UI and all that nice, nice stuff on the Mac. But we need the Linux kernel for the uh, Linux syscall interface. And we have two kernels, is we have two file systems, which means we can no longer do a bind mount to uh, get the data from one to the other. We have to do something much more like a, like a network mount. And so what we do is we use Fuse, uh, Linux file system and user space. And so uh, uh, whenever someone does a, a read call in a container on a shared volume, first of all, it goes through the Linux kernel, through the VFS, up to uh, user space into a process called transfused. Then we send that across to the host over a hypervisor socket to the uh, hyperkit process, which is the, uh, the virtual machine monitor that helps run the VM. And then that one communicates with the file system server over Unix domain socket. And so as you can tell by the, uh, by the, sort of the length of the path, uh, there's quite a lot of latency, quite a lot of overhead in just doing a, uh, like a read or write syscall. It's, um, it's, it pipelines nicely, but if you're doing lots of sequential uh, reads or writes, then it, uh, it can slow down. So that's the case on the Mac. And then Windows is uh, similar again, again, two kernels. Uh, it's a bit shorter data path-wise because we've got uh, SMB SIFs. So we uh, Samba mount the, uh, the host inside the VM. So when you do a read or write this call, it goes into the uh, Linux kernel, to the VFS, to the SIFs driver. Then it can go into the TCP IP, TCP IP, TCP IP stack. Then it can go uh, across the Hyper-V NIC and to, the, uh, and to the host again. So Windows data path is a bit shorter. But both for Mac and Windows, uh, the data path is a lot longer than on native Linux. And of course, uh, this implementation uh, goes with some limitation. Um, for OS 6, there is absolutely no write caching, meaning that if inside the container you are writing one byte of data in a file, for example, it's exactly what it's going to do, and you are going to pay the latency for this. On Windows, uh, there is um, absolutely no file system events. Uh, Windows on the CIFS uh, server actually supports uh, event propagation, but the CIFS client on Linux does not. So file events from the host are not propagated to the container. Also, um, we require admin permission to enable the net share, meaning that uh, some of our process must be run elevated. We also need to add a firewall rule uh, to allow the sharing. And even doing this, uh, the security software and the machine might be blocking us because he thinks we are doing something uh, smelly. Also, um, 
Well, that's pretty much it. These are uh, two basic tests about uh, performances uh, between Linux and the implementation on OS XFS and Samba we are doing on Docker Desktop. The first one is a basic DD test, so we are basically copying from dev0 to a mounted folder. Uh, we are using a conversion to avoid um, data caching on Linux. And we can see that it's basically three to four times faster uh, on Linux. And the second one is the one I call the ultimate uh, PHP test, uh, meaning it's uh, to try to start up Magento and to display the administration page in development mode, meaning absolutely no cache. And here uh, we can see that uh, on Linux it's basically between 8 and 10 times faster. Uh, the Magento administration page, the last time we checked, um, performs around uh, 200 uh, file opening to display. S and they are very small files, so it's actually the uh, most edge case for the, our implementation in Docker Desktop. That's the thing we have. Uh, that we are paying the worst price for. So we saw that um, there were implementation differences between Linux and Docker Desktop, and that uh, by architecture we will not be able to have the same performances between Docker Desktop and uh, the basic Linux implementation of Docker. So we are going to try to show you some of the best practice around this. Yeah, the um, yeah. I think one of the most powerful techniques you can use is to just avoid sharing too much, because every file access obviously now costs more. It costs a lot of latency. There are a lot of uh, user kernel context switches. There's VM to host context switches and back again. And plus on Mac, you get uh, a lot of uh, file events generated that have to be sent to the host. So I can um, I can do a quick demo if I can uh, move the cable. Okay. Hopefully. Any time now? Oh, sorry. Ooh. Yeah, okay, right. So I've got a little test program which will uh, measure the load in the system by counting the number of uh, file system accesses. Currently, it's at zero. And I'm going to uh, pretend I'm doing some development. And I uh, do a Docker run, and I share my entire home directory because, you know, why not? And uh, yeah, I'm running some Alpine. And uh, then I think, well, my code is compiling, so I'm going to browse the web for a while. So you know, I find some you know comics to read or whatever, and I uh, flick backwards and forwards. And if you notice, the uh, number of file system operations is uh, going upwards. We're one and a half thousand already, and these and the paths involved are. Things like the Safari cache. So Safari downloads web pages, saves them to the cache, then that generates a file event. We register for the file events. We then transport those to the VM, and these manifest as unnecessary load. So the thing to do really is to uh, have a look at all of the dash v uh, op bind bind options and uh, make them as precise as possible. So if I change the, uh, the Docker run to only share my, my Go directory, and we set the counter, and I now browse the web again. Nothing happens. No extra load is generated, which is what you want. Yeah. So the first thing is just try to avoid sharing too much. Let's stick this back in. <laughs> just a moment. Wow. Wow. Yep. Yeah, so the second thing uh, is if you are still seeing load and that manifests as in Activity Monitor, you can see the OS XFS process is busy, and maybe the HyperKit process is also busy, and you're not quite sure why. Uh, then there's a, there's a debugging trace command built into Docker for Mac. And if you just run this command line uh, from the slide, then it will uh, give you a live trace of all of the file system operations. And this allows you to see the file names that are being accessed, and so you recognize those and go, oh, why are we sharing that? Also, you can see the, uh, the operations like reads and writes and lookups. And that gives you a clue about uh, you know, the kind of workload that you've got and then what you can do to make it better. 
Also, in a lot of cases, uh, we actually want uh, some persistent data, but we don't really uh, need to be it to be shared with the host. For example, uh, when we are using uh, a database or a build cache like a Maven or Node uh, dependencies or uh, artifact caches. Uh, we don't need the data to be available permanently to the host. For a database, we might want to be able to initialize the data in the in the volume, but uh, after this, uh, we don't need direct access from the host. In this case, uh, instead of using a mount from the host, it's way faster to create a volume uh, using this simple command: volume create and then volume one dash v name of the volume slash uh, mounts and the volume is actually directly in the Linux VM so there were there are no uh, there are not the issue we have with OS XFS or Samba. Uh, also for some of the cases like uh, database we to initialize the data one trick is to have a first container that actually mount the volume um, a folder from the host and the volume to inject the data inside the volume and then use the normal uh, second containers to use it with your application. And if you if you want to export the data back uh, to the host at the end, you basically do the same thing than for the initialization, but you get it back. Uh, I'm going to switch again, I guess. No. No, oh, thank uh, And here I have a basic test where. I have a basic test, I think. Yes. Where I'm uh, starting. Oh, the angle. No, yes. Not touching. When I'm starting a uh, MySQL server uh, inside a container, and then I'm trying to inject some data. The first time I'm going to do this uh, with a mounted um, folder from the host, and the second time I'm going to do it with a volume. So we see absolutely no. So we are inserting uh, 5,000 entries. And it's, it took 16 seconds and now. If I do the exact same thing but with a volume share. It took seven seconds, so twice less. And the more agents, meaning the more threads that uh, insert data at the same time, and the more workload, uh, the bigger the difference is. Uh, when inserting like uh, one million entries, the difference is ten times, so it's quite significant. Perfect. Another tip if you're using a Mac is to uh, consider using the cached option because on, uh, by default all of the, uh, the read requests are handled synchronously so you do a read syscall and it goes all the way through to the host every time which does make sure the data is always fresh but does incur that penalty, that uh, remote call penalty. So uh, this is the command line uh, if you haven't seen it before. You just add an extra colon and say cached on the end and this will tell the, uh, the Linux uh, VM to uh, cache file attributes and, uh, and read, read contents. So I think that's a really useful thing. That's ideal for these read heavy workloads, of which I have one. So I'll just uh, switch back. This, this is seamless. the last time. 
Lovely. Okay. So I've got my same program which can uh, measure the load in terms of file system operations. And I've got this time, I'm going to uh, share a, the Docker source tree and do a find over the whole tree. So when that starts running, yep, you can see lots of file system operations. It's going to take a little while just to uh, read lots of source code. There we go. It took six and a half seconds and generated uh, 23,000 RPCs. And I'll do it again, this time with, with the cached option. Well, actually, both times it's a cached option, but the first time it's not cached. The second time it is cached, and it was 2.6 seconds. So about uh, twice as fast and with uh, fewer unnecessary file operations. So yeah, definitely try and use the cached option if it fits. So we are aware of all this limitation and we are definitely uh, working on solution for, for this. So uh, we are going to show you uh, three features we are currently working on. The, well I think we can directly. Yeah. So uh, as, we, as I just demonstrated we have a read caching option but we don't have a write caching option. Not, not yet anyway. And so it means that all of the, uh, all the data you write gets written ex through exactly as you request to the host. So for example if you do a, a simple DD from dev0 to the host and you lose the tracing command that I showed you earlier you'll see lots and lots and lots of sec single sector writes, 512 byte writes. In fact if your application were to write one byte then it would be one RPC all the way to the host. So you'd be a lot of, a lot of expense. So we have an API, but we haven't got the implementation yet. And the API uses another flag called delegated. And you'll be able to say hopefully in future uh, that uh, this will be uh, OK for write caching. And then we will take all these um, small writes and uh, we will coalesce them into much larger ones. So instead of 512 bytes, it becomes 128 kilobytes. So you get a much, much higher throughput. So even a, even a naive DD will go up uh, maybe a factor of 100 in this, in this kind of case. So yeah, write caching hopefully in, in the future. Yeah, and yeah, another one. <laughs> another one is um, on Windows. We have plans to uh, replace Samba. So uh, we described earlier some of the uh, some of the problems with Samba. And if, for example, we have to use the network, which means we're vulnerable if the firewall blocks us. We have to add firewall rules. They may conflict with the admin's policies. We have to export the drives, which means we have to run a net share command, which again may conflict with the admin's policies. Uh, when we mount the, um, mount the volume, we have to use the uh, user's credentials, and we don't want to have to touch user credentials. Um, and also with Samba, we don't really get very much control over the caching behavior. So we have um, we've uh, got, got a prototype which uses the uh, the same Fuse protocol that we have on the Mac, effectively, only with uh, gRPC instead of uh, TransfuseD. We have this uh, nice Fuse thing for Windows, which will uh, allow us to avoid the firewall, avoid the network, avoid playing with credentials, and give us more control over caching. And uh, we can do nice things like uh, trace the uh, file system operations, provide a visualization, and we'll be able to do file events and that kind of thing. So this is in the future. And uh, yeah. And finally, we are working on a volume plugin specifically for Docker Desktop. Um, we deeply think that uh, the current uh, default implementation of host sharing uh, should be the default one because, well, they, it has its performances issue, but it simply works and it's definitely the easiest for new user. You just like use a folder you have on your host and magically it's available on the container. But we are aware that from some user or some use cases it's not enough. So we are working on volume plugins to be able to answer specific needs. So the first one uh, we have developed is a uh, AirSync uh, volume plugin, meaning that you create a volume on the host, you create a volume, a Docker volume, and when using it inside in a container, it actually triggers AirSync between the folders that it shared between the host and the con uh, and the uh, between the host and the VM, and this is the AirSync uh, folder on the VM that's actually mounted. Meaning that you have uh, native performances because the container is actually using the VM file system, but you still have file synchronization. 
which can be either unilateral from the host to the VM with like AirSync or build directional with Unison. There are some limitations like it's not instantaneous, it's not because you modified a file on the host that it will be instantly uh, modified in the container because we have to watch for the file event and trigger the AirSync on the way for the AirSync process to finish. But apart from this, it's a good compromise in some use cases. For example, for PHP, we found that PHP development with this implementation instead of what we have, say, Samba, is uh, well, we, we got native performances issue, meaning it's 10 times faster than we are currently are. And that's the first plugin uh, we developed, but we definitely could think of more. It's the advantage of working inside the VM is that well we can uh, communicate between the host, uh, the host of Docker Desktop and the VM, so we can virtually create any volume implementation we ca we want. Um, I don't think we have time for questions. No. So, well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pierre and Dave. Can you stay around for a few minutes if anyone yes. has questions? Yes, okay. sure. Thank you for coming, everyone. I hope you enjoyed DockerCon. Um, safe travels home. Please fill in your survey in the app before you go, and, and, uh, and you can claim a free key ring when you do that. And uh, yeah, see you, uh, see you at the next DockerCon.